And you're back with your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso here on SABC3. It is tick and flea season, and we know they're awful. They're everywhere, and they can be picked up in a variety of ways. So today, Dr. Megan Kelly has some great tips on how we can keep our dogs and cats healthy and happy. Show them how much you love them with Bob Martin. So it's time now to focus on our furry friends and a tiny problem that they have. But this little problem isn't so tiny. In fact, not invisible at all when it comes to its pestiness. Now, fleas and ticks are a common problem for our pets and us. And protecting them from these nasty little critters isn't only an important part of responsible pet ownership, but it's also a way to keep them happy and healthy. We're joined this morning by Megan Kelly, veterinarian at Holistic Vet. Good to have you here. Thank you. And I see you already warmed up to Bob and Bella. <laughs> it's always good to have them on your side. Uh, tell us first of all, most commonly, where do our pets get these fleas and ticks? They'll usually pick them up from animals that come through your garden. So mm. maybe some feral cats or rodents, so wild animals. Um, but remember, if people come visit you, if they bring their pets or just people might carry fleas from their pets um, into your household. The problem is, is once you get a few yes. and they establish themselves in your house, in your garden, they can very quickly reproduce and cause an infestation. Yeah. So we all know that ticks can be very harmful, in fact, sometimes fatal to our pets. But what about yeah. fleas? Are they just as dangerous? Um, they don't carry as many life-threatening um, diseases or problems. Um, ticks are, are definitely worse. Um, they carry two diseases mainly, mm -hmm. um, Babesia or biliary, and another one called a lichiosis. Um, biliary is a problem because it actually causes anemia. So the, the tick will bite the pet and it'll transmit an organism into the red blood cell, which breaks up the red blood cell, so they become anemic. Wow. And over long, if, if they're not treated, it can, it can actually re result in death. Yes. Um, whereas fleas cause more sort of minor problems, like skin problems, so you can get allergies. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing which is a health implication to you and your family um, is that they carry tapeworms. So it's important if you ever do see fleas on your pets mm -hmm. that you, you deworm them. Okay. Um, in severe cases, though, so sometimes we'll see like in puppies, um, if they've got really severe flea infestations, that can cause anemia and sometimes can result in death. Yeah. So how then do you as a pet owner know? What are those yeah. telltale signs when your pet either has ticks or fleas? There's certain places that you can look. Um, fleas you'll normally find sort of around the tail um, and on the back and around the ears and on the neck. Mm -hmm. And you can look for things like um, little black dots, which are called uh, flea dirt. And okay. it's actually digested um, blood. Um, or you, can, you might be able to see the fleas themselves. Yes. And then ticks usually attach in hard to reach areas. So underneath the arms, um, in the inguinal folds and around the ears. Yes. So you actually have to, if you, if you take your dog for a walk and you go in an area where there's long grass, when you come back, you should actually have a look th through them and just feel through to see if you can find any ticks or fleas. Yeah, and I guess just kind of like generally, you know, when you groom your pets to be on the lookout for yeah, things like exactly. that. Okay, so yeah. what about prevention though? How do we then make sure that our pets, uh, you know, as far as possible, don't don't get ticks and fleas. Yeah. I think it's important to do it regularly, so whether it's in winter um, or summer. Mm. So all those diseases are transmitted throughout the year. Yes. Um, you're going to find more ticks and fleas in summer, but whatever product you use, it must use all the different, um, treat all the different life cycles. So not just the adult flea, it must also do the larva as well as the pupa. Um, and if you do see fleas on your pets, mm. that's usually only about 10% of the fleas in the population. So there's another 90% which wow. is in the environment. So it's really important to treat the environment too. And you can use things like foggers or environmental sprays, <clears throat> wash the, the, the bedding um, and put it into the UV light. Yes. Now, I remember as a <coughs> child when my grandmother used to get us to groom the dogs, it was always, you know, checking for fleas and whatnot and then removing yeah. them. But many people have different ways of doing it. Is there a safe and effective way of doing that, removing ticks and fleas to make sure that there's no further infestation that takes place and no infections as well? Yeah, you, you can do it with your fingers or you can actually use a little device. And um, there's a thing called a tick twister. Yes. And um, it's actually got little tweezers on and you, you attach, attach it onto the tick and then you turn it and twist it. Okay. Um, but if you don't have one of those, then you can just use your fingers. Yes. Uh, what you want to do is get right to the skin. So as far down as you can go, mm -hmm. hold on to the tick and do a sort of steady pull and twist. And you need to make sure that you've got the head and the mouth parts. Yes. And that's the most important thing. So if you look where, where that area was, if you see a little little brown thing or a little black thing, then you've left the, the head, mm -hmm. then you need to use tweezers and actually pull it out. Uh -huh. You don't want to leave that in because it can form an abscess. Yeah, and I think Bob and Bella have been paying special attention to this class. And I hope that you have been too, because this is all about making sure that our pets are happy and healthy. Megan, thank you very much. Pleasure. Show them how much you love them 
with Bob Martin.